<laughs> this is the hour of awesome with Robert, Chris, and Steven. This isn't the hour of neat, cool, or rad. It is all going to be awesome. Okay, uh, welcome to the hour of awesome episode 11. Our uh, second video show, but the first one that anyone will ever see, because the first one I look like I'm on crack. Oh, I'm definitely um, putting that up. <laughs> <laughs> Did you already post it? Yeah, well, it's there. Yeah, yeah it's the our, apology episode. It's our Bruce Willis uh, episode. Yeah, we're not to, was the that the Bruce that. episode? That was the yeah, Bruce episode. Bruce Willis episode, yeah. Oh, oh okay. You've lost but that wasn't mind. the Bruce episode. It was oh, a no. Bruce, yes. It was a Bruce episode. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> I'm Robert Macy. Here with my co-hosts uh, Stephen Humphrey Me. and Chris Cole, voguing in. So, <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that doesn't uh, work so well on the, on the audio <laughs> side, but go with it. Man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. So we've uh, this has been an interesting uh, little exploration <laughs> in video production. Uh, we are 40 minutes in, even though the show's just started, because I was having all kinds of problems, and then Steven was having problems. Chris has been fine the whole time. No, so, uh, it was all you. Yeah, so <laughs> what have you guys been up to this week? Go ahead, Steve. Oh, me. Um, I don't know. It's kind of a boring, simple week. Uh, we're between semesters, so it's relax, hang out. Uh, oh, yeah, I did lose uh, a good week of my life to uh, a video game. Uh, which is basically uh, Civilization on, on crack, which is Uni Europa Universalis 4. Um, I am, I think, 45 or 50 hours into the game, and I have not actually finished an entire round with the, the country. So I'm going to try to take over the world, and I probably have another 90 to 100 and something hours before I finish one round. So, but oh, you're into that pretty hardcore. Yeah, I don't know how to do things half. You should have completed it by this time next week, then. No. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to work, too. If it's a Civ like game, those uh, things can last forever. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, speaking of video games, uh, we had the summer Steam sale. Oh, yes. And I added uh, significantly to my list of shame of games that you would never loaded on your, any computer anywhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm now up to 83 unplayed games. <laughs> but uh, bought lots of uh, three and four and five packs uh, for us to try some various co-op stuff. So we now have, uh, let's see, Trine 2, um, Payday 2, and then the, uh, alpha, the, what do they call it, early access release of Broforce. Broforce. Uh, I'm really interested to see what these games will be like. Payday, I expect, will be, it is what it is because it's a first-person shooter. But the other two being platformers, uh, I've never done a co-op platformer. Hmm. So that'll be interesting to see how that works. Yep. I mean, I've played a couple of uh, two, I think some of the Mario Brothers games were two-player well, yes. uh, platformers. Mario Luigi. Yeah. Were you on the same screen or was it split? Yeah. Same screen. Yeah. Oh, okay. Man, yeah, you always remember. had Luigi could trail behind. Yeah, that was doable. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Mario and Mario's brother. Yeah. Now, in Super Mario Brothers, um, you alternated. Yeah, the original, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But the Mario Brothers, I think they were both on the screen at the same time. Like, oh, okay. could be wrong about that. Uh, Joust, that was one, I think, that uh, yeah. two players. I don't know if that's exactly a platform. Balloon Fight was another good one from the original Nintendo game. Not quite a yeah. platformer, though. Yeah. Defender. So. Defender, well, I mean yeah. the ones... Defender? How did you... How were there two people in Defender? I thought there were two places they could launch from. Uh, Am I mixing things up? I, mean, I uh, yeah. Okay. That one. Okay. That one's, yeah. Yeah. yeah right well, anyway, so so that'll be fun. We'll get those going, and then we'll give them to our intern to put up on YouTube. Mm, um, intern. Yes, mm, intern. So I've been playing uh, a little bit of Hearthstone. So I put in about like two and a half hours, and I'm up to rank ten. Well done. Uh, so I think I finally figured out this damn game. So I may push for legend this uh, this season. What kind of deck you playing? Um, mainly druid. Okay. So I have what they call the uh, druid, the fast druid. Oh. Um, no legendaries in it at all. Uh, 
very, very, I don't even know if there's any epics in it. So it's just a basic deck, more or less. But it's, it's, it's fun. It's very flexible. It's, uh, it's entertaining to play. Okay. So it's, it's one where you can pull out the last minute, you know, Hail Mary kind of win. Um, oh, all right. So that makes it fun. Um, if I hadn't also, sworn off the whole game, maybe I would actually play that deck. Yeah, well, you rage quit. I, it's the way I play everything, man. <laughs> I knew a couple fast druids in college, but uh, I don't think it's the same kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah, going around, what do they call it, Starclad? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so. Times. Yeah, so what about you, Chris? Uh, let's see. So Steven's lost a whole week to a video game. I lost a whole week to a new guitar, which I'll talk about on one of our other shows. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. And uh, got back from vacation, which I'll talk about later in the show. Other than that, it's been a pretty decent week. Just sort of chilling out. Relax. Yeah, mine's been 99.9% yeah. .9 just doing work. Yeah, well, I, thought, I thought you were going to go 99.9 .9 degrees in your house, but you know, whatever. Well, that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see. I had a power outage for 18 hours. My AC broke. I had to get that fixed. And the house got up to 95 degrees in the house. That's close. So, yeah. Which was really unpleasant and very humid. Uh, let's see what else happened. Oh, I had some problems with my hot water heater today uh, while I was taking a shower. That was fun. <laughs> uh, ah, it's hot. No way it's cold. Well, thankfully, it was just after the get done uh, washing the hair moment. So you, I didn't have, your, like, you don't have any hair. Okay, I got a little tiny bit of hair. Um, and it gets, well, scalp, if nothing else, gets greasy. <laughs> <laughs> there's a commercial. <laughs> there's, a, there's a shampoo <laughs> curl <laughs> commercial the I'm making. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking of so. a little bowling ball, you know, uh, sh uh, shiners, you know, polish. Oh, yeah, yeah. Stick yeah, your head in that. Like and... <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway. Oh, and I watched uh, some of the live stream for uh, Nerdtacular, which went on this weekend in Snowbird, Utah. Right. Uh, that was kind of fun. So found out some stuff I got to talk to you guys about later that uh, I want to bail on our our uh, storage provider. Okay. So go the Good Tom enough. Merritt route. And, uh, so I got some interesting stuff. They had a nice um, panel on podcasting uh, okay. that I listened to. And then I watched the the live stream of the Angry Chicken, so which entertains the hell out of me. If there's no actual chicken, it's not worth it. No, there. Well, they may have been eating chicken. I don't know. Okay. You know that that one was audio only, so I couldn't see the, the video. So, okay. Well, let's get into our first segment. Super. All right. Uh, happy fun time. <laughs> Oh, that's it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it ended a little abruptly. We got to recut that clip. <laughs> Just mid sound, mid note. Well, Stephen, this was your crazy idea. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So, okay. our longtime listeners are well aware that we've been doing a series of movies uh, through the recommendations of the different group here. Uh, Robert has recommended one movie and whatever that Rucker Hauer film was, the first one we watched. Um, <laughs> wait, oh, wait. For those on our video ones, there it is. It's fantastic right there. Um, and then Chris has also recommended a film that the director has disavowed any knowledge of. Uh, that's left us <laughs> with uh, two films that I've put forth. The first one was Thin Man many years ago or weeks ago. Uh, and then today what I recommended was a film that was sold for $10 million at uh, uh, that big thing out there the west in utah whatever that thing sundance is. sundance yeah sold for 10 million dollars at sundance and raked in a good six million dollars at the box office so i figured it's a film that no one's actually watched uh which is hamlet 2 uh for those who do not know hamlet 2 is a 2008 film starring steve coogan um those of our british fans would be well aware of steve coogan he hasn't crossed over into the u.s as much i think uh most of his stuff is is uniquely british in interest um, by Tristan Shandy and, and, and the like. Uh, but the film is about a high school drama professor 
uh, professor is probably a word, bad word there, high school drama teacher who is an exceptionally bad actor and actually a fairly bad teacher uh, who gets ripped a new one by the 14-year-old drama critic for the newspaper. Um, they are about to cancel the show or the uh, drama program entirely and at his last wit's end and perhaps a, following a mental breakdown, he decides to write his own musical which was a sequel to Hamlet, Hamlet 2. And as he explains, well, didn't everybody die in the original? Well, they had a had a special piece, which was uh, time travel. I uh, had a time machine. So that fixed everything for us. Um, I'd leave it to you guys to see what you think. This was a film that I, again, I don't, I would not rate it as the greatest film that's ever existed in the face of the earth, but I would rate it as a film that was evidently watchable and had a, a bunch of very quotable parts that's what i'll leave it at all right so robert comes over to my house thursday night and goes <laughs> this movie is crap okay all right. <laughs> and so he's like it's gonna be horrible right and so i'm like okay fine uh friday i'll start watching it a little bit i got some work to do anyway I'll put it up in the corner of my uh, computer screen, and while I'm writing code, I'll occasionally glance at this movie, right, and sort of figure out what's going on. So that's what I do. And yeah, the first few minutes were kind of tough to get through, I thought. But I found myself, as the movie was going, paying more attention to the movie and less attention to my code, and starting to get more and more interested in the movie. And I thought it wasn't bad. All right. I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. I thought uh, it was actually right. I thought it made Maximum Overdrive look good. Oh. Oh, I don't know. And I think on the Redgar Hauer scale, I would give it a two. Ooh. You Ooh. clearly have some problems. Yeah. I, I couldn't stand this film, man. <sighs> it was such derivative crap of every other high school redeem the students film that's ever been made. But that was the point. They noted that as they're going no, through. No, I mean... But not in a good way. Oh. It wasn't good parody. It was just bad. It was over the only the part top. I liked, and I did, I got to tell you, I genuinely really, really enjoyed it, was Rock Me Sexy Jesus. Okay. Catchy tune. I loved that bit. It was, it was entertaining. Uh, I thought that part of the musical was fantastic. If the entire film would have been like that, it may have been the best film ever made. <laughs> but the other... I don't know, 90 minutes of the film was just me counting the 90 minutes of my life. I'll never get back. Oh, that's, that's not right. So, no, I just, I, I didn't dig this one, man. Uh, but that bit, I loved that bit. And I really like that particular actor, but I think more is uh, a bit player in ensemble stuff. I just don't think he can carry a film. All right. I thought he was actually really good in The Other Guys. <laughs> Have you seen have yes. you seen the other guys? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I thought he, he was um sort of like the main villain, I guess if you will in that movie. And I thought he was pretty good in that. And I didn't make the connection that he was the same guy until I actually went to IMDb. Okay. I was like, "Oh, right, that was the guy from the other guys." Yep. Uh, oh, he's great. It's yeah. just uh No. <laughs> and Amy Poehler's bit was throwaway and uh, Well, David just, Arquette was wonderful. He was in the movie for probably 10 or 15 minutes. He had four lines. And the whole Elizabeth Shue thing. I thought that was great. <laughs> it got old like 10 seconds after it started. Oh, come on. She was having so much fun. She turned during the actual things. During Rock Me Sex at Jesus, she turned. That's the crane. No. No. It was over Sorry, the top. Man. The whole point was yeah. it had to be so over the top. Yeah, but when I presented this to Chris, I told him he could. he might very well like this film. Yeah, um, you, you did say that, and you said that a couple of times. I will give you that, but you are pretty much setting me up for absolute failure here. Like, you are going to hate this movie. It's terrible. <laughs> no, no, no. I hated the movie. <laughs> okay. But, okay, that's true. But you really loved Maximum Overdrive. Oh, and, yes. Yeah. And so, clearly, our opinions <laughs> diverge on some stuff. <laughs> and then, you know, Stephen and I liked Lady Hawk, and you hated that. I wouldn't say hated. I would say disliked. I wouldn't okay. say that I liked Lady Hawk. <laughs> I'd say that Lady Hawk was eminently watchable compared to other Rucker Hauer films. Yes, especially that first one, that wanted dead or alive. That was just utter crap. Uh, Hamlet two definitely superior to. Yeah, wanted dead or, wanted or alive, dead or alive. Was really bad. Yeah. Now, if you edited that film to be about 
three minutes long. It could be awesome. <laughs> three minute film. It's a little internet short. It would be a great short. Oh man. I think it would be great. You have the basketball scene, a little bad harmonica playing, and then him pulling the the grenade pin and out of and you get to watch Shinsen's head blow up. Three I, minutes, man. It would be the best film ever. Man. I've seen three movies in the last seven days. I've seen the newest Transformer movie. I've seen Maleficent and I've seen Hamlet 2. And Hamlet 2 was not the worst of those three. All right. I'll take that too. Okay. Well, spoil some stuff, man. What do you want? Well, tell us. Well, without giving spoilers. Okay. Your opinion of Maleficent and, and the Transformers. I do not like fairy tale movies. I'm not a huge fan of children's movies. Maleficent isn't exactly a children's movie, but it's kind of is. And so I, it was, pro, it's pro, it was well done. It was very nice to look at all that stuff. The acting was fine. I'm just, that's not my thing. Um, Transformers was Transformers. Okay. They changed <laughs> out the, uh, the cast. Shia for uh, Wahlberg. Yep. Doesn't matter. Well, well, do it on a scale then of the transformer scales. What is this? The fourth one? Fourth. Uh, yeah. Uh, second best. Okay. Only well, because it has Dinobots best. in it. <laughs> Which one's the best one? Oh, the first one. I'd say the first one's the best one just because, you know, it was new. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, you know, Optimus Prime riding Grimlock. That was pretty cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dinobots are awesome. But now here's the thing. And I don't think this is too much of a spoiler because by the time this actually goes live, this movie is going to be out for a while. Uh, you have to wait <laughs> two and a half hours for the Dinobots to appear, which kind of pissed me off a little bit because I wanted Dinobots. Are you serious? Yeah. I mean, all the damn movie posters. Hell, there's this big cardboard cutout of Optimus Prime with the sword riding Grimlock in my local movie theater. I'm thinking bad ass. This movie is going to be Dinobots nonstop. Two and a half freaking hours later. Hope we don't have to bleep out freaking. Anyway. Um, no, it's fine. Awesome. Cool. Two and a half hours later, you finally <laughs> see the damn Dinobots. Oh, man. How long and Grimlock doesn't even talk. And in it's only two hours long, which is really awkward. Oh, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's actually kind of long. Um, I think it's two hours and 45 minutes. Oh, oh, so there's like 15 minutes left of the film when they show up? Well, it's 45 minutes left of the film when they sh- Well, no, wait. I should say. I thought uh, you were a math person. Wait a minute. Let's see. Yeah, <laughs> two yeah, and yeah. a half plus 45 say, wait, wait, wait. is two hours and 45. Okay. All right, wait. The movie started at 2.30. Dinobots came in at 4, 4.15. So hour and a half, hour 45 minutes before the Dinobots arrived. It's also good when you're looking at your watch whilst watching a film. It's usually a good sign. I'm having a terrible problem doing math this late. I, st- I distinctly remember like, looking at my watch saying two hours before the damn Dinobots appeared. I'm sticking with my original number. It was two hours. The Dinobots were around for 45 minutes. Number. Two original hours. Number was two and a half hours. Was it two and a half? Okay, I misspoke. Two hours. <laughs> Have you been drinking again? <laughs> no, I wish I had, though. This is not the drinking episode. This is not oh, the drinking man. episode. <laughs> we're going okay. backwards here. I, we totally diverged, actually, from <laughs> Hamlet 2 anyway, and I apologize. But Hamlet 2 was not the worst of the three movies that I saw this week. Hamlet 2 had two musical numbers that we got to participate in. One was Rock Me Sexy Jesus. The other one was yes. Race in the Face. Yes. What more do you need? Uh, exactly. Well, On the I, DVD, they actually have a little sing-along thing. You know, little the little words at the bottom so you can go and sing. It has a little bouncy ball. It's fantastic. It's also Dude, I could have gotten yeah. that from YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> and saved yeah. myself. Oh God! I don't know why it's. I think it's one of those films, man, that just as particularly. No, wait, Buckaroo Banzai was mine too. Oh yes, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's just one of those films, man, like kind of like Clerks. That yeah. just I just don't get it. Yeah, you're old. Okay. I thought <laughs> Hamlet too had some nice, somewhat maybe not so subtle things to it, like when the. Uh, Drama was being canceled as uh, being unimportant education while they were standing in front of the trophy display for the sports. I thought that yep. was awesome. Yep. I thought that was so funny. Uh, and then, you know, uh, one of the students said, you want to save drama, but you produce nothing worth saving. And I thought that was kind of uh, an, an interesting quote that could have been taken more than just from the context of the movie. 
And so, you know, as, and sort of as I, some people and how they justify cutting art projects, mm -hmm. you know, or art programs as to whether they produce anything worth saving. So uh, not to saying that I agree with that. I don't agree with that at all. But that's some folks perspective. So, uh, yeah, I just thought it was cool. Who put the other one in here about the parents who uh, had the issue with the kids? Oh, that was you? I put okay. that. Yeah, that was the kid that. Uh, so the teacher goes to the parents house thinking the kid's like this gangbanger. Right. right. And they're ex you're expecting some kind of sort of slum ghetto kind of like right. setup. And it's this really nice house. And the right. parents are both college professors or something along the lines. And they opposed <laughs> the student being in the play, not because of the content, but because of the fact that it was a sequel that shouldn't exist. Yeah. And it was, you know, a bad a bad concept of a play. Yes, yes. But, so yeah, both the both the parents. So the dad was a was a published author. He had like twelve books or something like that. Mom was a artist who had stuff in the the Guggenheim or something like that. And so yeah. it just was bad. It was it was poorly done that we should never have a sequel to. And the writing was atrocious. Right. And so he's begging, of course, for notes at that point of time too, <laughs> which is of course nice and over the top. So. You have to take everything that was done there as being way over the top on purpose. It yeah. was Airplane in that kind of sense, but it wasn't a parody in the way that Airplane was a parody of a parody kind of an idea. Right. That's all right, yeah, Robert. Whatever. <laughs> you don't have to enjoy everything. I said beforehand, you're either going to love this movie or hate this movie. There's nowhere in between because it's not a good film, but it has either really good parts or just is going to annoy the hell out of you. So. Yeah, it was just, it was too much of a seen it. Fair enough. You're you're uh, kind of sad then. <laughs> well, I'm sad because I've watched too many films, I guess. Yeah. Or too many bad teen comedies. Yep. Because it just seemed like another, just another bad. Yeah, without James, what is it? Edward Almos? Edward James Almos? And that's him. <laughs> Battlestar Galactica. Adamo was not in it. That's so. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Adama was not in it. Um, Neither the elder or the younger. <laughs> and if you saw Caprica, the elder elder. Oh. Ooh, I never saw that. Uh, I saw the first few episodes. It wasn't bad. <laughs> well, it's not a ringing endorsement if I saw the first few episodes. That's yeah. a, you know, wow, you, I'm disappointed. It sucks. You know how I am with TV. Like, <laughs> yeah, but if it was awesome, you would have seen it. Yeah, yeah probably. So. All right. All right. Okay. Well, I am glad I finally saw it, given how much you talked about it. And, and that one bit, it was worth it to have seen that one, that one musical number. There you go. Uh, that was really fun. I, I definitely recommend that you go on YouTube and watch that, even if you can't bring yourself to watch the whole film. Well, here's the thing. So I'll, I'll say with that, the, I've had to, seen this on TV before and watched that part, just the musical. Oh, and do they screw with it? No, 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 no. Not, not, on, not on broadcast. It was on Stars or something like that. Oh, okay. And that's the only experience that my wife had had with the whole movie. And she hated it at that point. Then we sat oh, down God, and watched the... that was the best part. Well, no, because was, it was completely out of context and so forth. So she didn't oh, like that at all. Okay. And so when we watched the film, she actually said she really enjoyed the film. It was fun. You know, she was laughing a lot during the actual film. So I think that that musical doesn't work if you haven't seen the stuff beforehand. Well, see, yeah, well, I think it does. I think it would work depending on how you take it. If you take it as a bit of religious parody of people getting way too bent out of shape for something that actually wasn't really the least bit blasphemous. Right, compared to everything else. I mean, that was the part they kept talking about, all the ridiculous things that they were doing in the musical. You know, and so that's but the There were thing. a lot of bits of the musical that were, well, or at least that they talked about yeah. in the other number. Yeah. That were quite offensive. Right. Um, but the Rock Me Sexy Jesus actually was, was totally, I don't know, I think I, I think you could show it to an extreme list uh, and they'd be fine. You know, I don't if they know get about that. <laughs> I don't know. Because if you look at the underlying messages, none of them are bad. Yeah. Right. Jesus didn't do anything. Uh, Stop the guy from smoking. Yeah. Yeah. With, oh God, the acting. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, See, right. I had trouble. I just couldn't appreciate the, the intentional bad acting. It got to be just bad acting. Oh, no. That was the fun part. Uh, See, it, to me, it was just like. 
a joke that just got old. Fair enough. So. Don't have to like everything. No. But but I am glad you brought that one to us. And thinking of some of the stuff that Chris has talked me into watching. <laughs> <laughs> Rubber. Yes. Immediately comes to mind. Yeah. Although the first part of that film, I think, is unbelievably brilliant. Mm-hmm. The first bit before you're introduced to the tire <laughs> is fantastic. If the whole film would have been that, it would have been it would have been great. So well, rubber is high art compared to Birdemic. <laughs> yeah, <or> thanks killing. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. No, thanks killing is high art compared to Birdemic. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I have some Birdemic then. <laughs> okay. Well. Uh, crap we're quite a ways in so i'm gonna let's move on to my bit all right i should tell you so that you don't waste your time you can't make me angry please spend an hour with him okay so for robert's rambles this week uh i got a podcast and a book podcast is uh the grumpy cast um it's sterile skills and i think it's jay hammond uh and from their bit, I'm going to read you the way they describe it. Join Daryl and Hammond as they take a crap, take the crap from their lives and dump it here to set a fire. Uh, I really enjoy this podcast. They basically bitch about the crap that's really pissed them off for the week. Uh, and then they go into another negative thing that happened to them and how to try to make that one into a positive. And it's basically it's two guys who normally have a fairly upbeat uh, personality. And this is their way to vent. Uh, to the universe so that they can get on with their lives and be generally happy people. Um, Okay. And I kind of like it. They're both, neither one's a cynic. They're both like frustrated optimists. (laughs) Um, And uh, it's a lot of fun. I uh, I think there's six episodes in maybe. Um, It's relatively short. It's like a half hour podcast. Uh, It's from um, Daryl is, uh, he's the Trek nerd on Twitter. Uh, he does a stump the Trek nerd bit on the morning stream, and then uh, he has a Star Trek podcast, and he's a Trek nerd. Um, Fair enough. So it's it's fairly entertaining. So I would recommend that for people that like podcasts and you want something that's got a slightly different spin on things. Um, and then there's a new show on Sci-Fi called Dominion. Uh, it's basically angels come down from. You it's know, a God's movie world. that got turned into it, right? Yeah. Well. It's a half-ass follow-on to Legion. Okay. Okay. Um, which was kind of a cult classic film um, about, I think it's the arch, I think it's Michael comes down and tries to save humanity from, you know, all the other angels who have decided to wipe it out because uh, they're pissed off because God's gone away. So anyway, it's the TV version of that. And so it's kind of meh so far. Uh, but it's only been... <laughs> The episode so hopefully they'll turn it around because right now it's just not doing it for me wow i'm not getting levels on me at all can you hear me okay. yeah yeah just fine okay now let me move my mic good radio yep, yeah absolutely well if you can't hear me um <laughs> maybe better you're just yeah. complaining about hamlet too so <laughs> well, screw you <laughs> um so i i i got a book basically with a similar thing called Balance. It's by a guy who self-publishes on Amazon of uh, M.R. Forbes. And I'm going to read you his intro bit. It says, my name is Landon Hamilton. Once upon a time, I was a 23-year-old security guard trying to regain my life after spending a year in prison for stealing people's credit card numbers. Now I'm dead. Okay, I was supposed to be dead. I got killed after all, but a funny thing happened. I had turned the mortal coil. I met Dante Alighieri. Yeah, that Dante. He told me I was special. So basically, it's this dead guy who's supposed to have this perfect balance of good and evil within him um, who meets Dante in purgatory and is sent back to Earth to fight angels and demons. And it's a similar sort of uh, spin to the new sci-fi thing. Uh, I'm two books into this series now, which doesn't mean I particularly like it because I've read like 15 book series where I didn't like it at all. Uh, <laughs> Kind of feel I'm, I'm a little tiny bit of a completionist, but it's yes, sir. okay. 
Um, this is a great sell. <laughs> so, okay. You know, I don't actually like it. It's okay. <laughs> well, I'm not trying to I'm get anybody. Keep reading yeah. it. I was thinking about checking this book out, but maybe not now. Yeah. I I would download since it's uh, you can get the Kindle one. You can uh-huh. download a sample. It's worth downloading a sample because, and I think it might get better. Um, <laughs> On book seven. Right now, it's just sort of okay. It's really hard to write this stuff without it becoming trite. Uh, yeah. I can't think of a really good example. You know, the TV show Supernatural uh, did some of this stuff, and it was kind of okay in a Buffy-esque sort of way. Spawn, not the movie. Well, Spawn... No, no, I'm talking about the whole Angels Come to Earth thing. Oh, okay. oh the Sorry. prophecy with Christopher Walken. Oh, that's a cool yeah, movie. Yeah, the first one was yeah. pretty good. Is it Constantine? Uh, well, Constantine the comic. Yeah, I'm not saying the movie. Not Keanu. Yeah, I kind of, well, I like Constantine a lot, but I'm trying to think of, it doesn't have the quite as extreme angel theme. Uh, yeah. That's pretty rare. Dog and there's more of a him trying to chase yeah, uh, I'm not as enamored with his stuff as you are, man. Uh, I don't like any of them. I, I, well, I liked his documentary of Prince. That, I think, was brilliant. Um, God, what's his name? Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith, yeah. So anyway, back to this book. Uh, it the may be the best example so well I've seen of the whole Angels Come to Earth thing because it completely avoids <laughs> any theology uh, involved in it. Um, but that's what I think would could make it good if someone actually went in and explored some of those themes, uh, took some of the various religious perspectives, uh, and played around with them some. I, I find those kinds of things more interesting. But this it just was kind of meh. But I think a little bit better in the TV show. So, <laughs> okay, I think he's got five or six more. I'll let you know when I finish the series. Okay. <laughs> So <laughs> you've got a good religious uh, theme going on here today, though. You've got Rock Me, Say, See, Jesus, and you've got the Archangel. Yeah. yeah. They're relatively quick read. They're like 400 pages. Takes about two hours. Uh, oh, and not me. I'm a slow reader, so that'd be... I oh. mean, you were having problems doing math yeah. in your head earlier today, so... That's true. I'm slow with math, reading. <laughs> <laughs> kind of dumb. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but this doesn't require any thought. Yeah. Uh, you can and it's not very right. good, so you can burn right through it. <laughs> That's true, yeah. I want to skip sections. good. <laughs> So it's sort of like your opinion of Lady Hawk. It's not bad. It's <laughs> eminently readable. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> painful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't regret. With a spoon. Let's put it this way. I don't regret having read the two books. Um, there's another series about Area 51 that I think I've read 11 or 12 of those books. And those I kind of regret having read. <laughs> um, but I got them on a sale where they were like a buck each. And, you know, if you buy something, you're forced by law to actually read it. Actually, I, I do have a few things on my Kindle. I probably have about 20 books on there I haven't read yet. You have 20 books that you haven't read out of the thousands that you purchased, but 87 yeah. games that you purchased that you haven't downloaded. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I get a lot more reading than game playing in at night now, sitting up with my daughter. Okay. Uh, can't really play video games while I'm holding her. Fair enough. How about when you drive the car? Can you play the games then? <laughs> no, I can't do that in the car. That's why I listen to the podcast. So my reading and podcast consumption are basically due to life circumstances of having a three-hour commute and uh, being up for probably two hours a night, um, sitting in a chair. And that chair is so molded to my ass. <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. I was uh, going to say, there's probably a market for one-handed games out there, but then I realized, no, oh, that already <laughs> exists. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> there we go. Uh, that, we've hit the nice <laughs> low today. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Usually so we have to apologize to too. Bruce. We're sorry, Bruce, and particularly to Chris's mom. Oh, yeah. Yes. Sorry, mom. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I don't know what I was talking about, mom. This is a theme <laughs> that you continue across every episode there, Chris. Yeah, yes. say something that your mom won't like. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, wait till you start reading our Twitter. <laughs> so. Okay, so I, I've wasted way too much time on, on an excellent podcast and a meh book. So <laughs> move on to Steven.
Self-realization. I was thinking of the immortal words of Socrates, who said, "I drank what." So I guess uh, what I wanted to talk about today was inspired by Chris sending off an email to an article which he apparently hasn't actually read, um, <laughs> which is fantastic. Um, <laughs> I thought we'd have a conversation. It would be great, you know. I read it. Well, you read Actually, it. Actually, I read good. it before you sent it. That's that's great. That's uh, <laughs> at least one of us uh, or two of us are actually participating in the conversation initiated by the third. Well, tell uh, him what the article was about. Uh, I don't remember anymore. No. Um, so, what I want to talk about, I guess, was a little bit about the esports movement. Um, it seems to be a phrase that it's very hard to explain to a lot of people what esports is. Uh, esports, for those who aren't necessarily following this space, is basically electronic sports. It'd be video games played professionally. Um, it's a growing area. I think the stats that you talked about, Robert, was something, what, about uh, how many million or billion hours of video watched last oh, year? God, it was like, it was ridiculous. It was, what, like 7 billion hours? Yeah, something? something along those lines. People watching people play games. Um, there are now tournaments, uh, the big deal that's coming on right now is that there's a couple tournaments that are, you know, $10 million prize pool. Um, so becoming a significant space. It's, it's... Well, the Dota one's gonna, at least $4 million is gonna go to the winning team. So there you go. Wow. Um, you know, Hearthstone's coming online for a little space. Um, StarCraft still does pretty well. League of Legends is doing pretty huge numbers. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, esports is becoming an entertainment space that people are really, really getting into, I guess is the point, right? There is there is now more and more people who are excited about it, and people say, well, it's not a sport, it's not a sport. You know, you have baseball's a sport. They run and they hit. Well, I mean, I'm a huge baseball person, but rarely, most of the time, they're standing. Occasionally, they, they <laughs> throw a ball or they, they swing at a ball, but most of the time, they're standing. But if we consider it NASCAR to be a sport, we consider Formula One to be a sport, which they are, then to say that that's a sport, but video games are not a sport doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, you're controlling a you know, this and, and a foot or using your hands um, seems pretty much the same concept to me. Uh, it's just generational in that sense. But the, the article that, that Chris sent on to us that he didn't read was about uh, there still <laughs> seems to be a, a continuation of sort of gender splitting. Um, they're having these competitions and they're actually saying that, you know, there's a men's bracket and a women's bracket. Which, or, okay. or there was somewhere women are not allowed to play. Women aren't allowed to play at all. Right. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's one peop, one person to say, okay, maybe there's a reason that, you know, there should be a men's basketball and women's basketball that maybe women can't compete in the men's basketball. I don't know that that's 100% true, um, but there may be benefits perhaps to spe separating that. There's no clear statement that there is, like, a physical ability difference between men and women playing video games. I don't think men have stronger thumbs um, you know, oh, even worse. Uh, in the article specifically, it was about Hearthstone. Oh, okay. It's well, a freaking card game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Physical ability. That, I can do and this. And then they split. I think it was Street Fighter was for men, but Tekken was for women. It was just like, bizarre. what the hell? Asinine. <laughs> it was asinine. Yeah. yeah. You know, to use a Robert phrase. Um, and so it is an interesting thing that, that we've got this space that's growing and, and it's growing really, really well. And you know, people under the age of 25, under 30 even, I would say, are, are becoming more and more aware of this space and are following it or be interested. Um, and people are making good money off of participating as a, as a competitive athlete. Um, at the same time, we're carrying on a lot of these stereotypes and really causing divisiveness. I mean, there's absolutely no reason to say, you know, women, you know, you can't play in this, this space. Um, you know, you've talked about some of the podcasts you follow, Robert, that you actually have the uh, the Angry Chicks or whatever that one was that you did. <laughs> it was Angry Chicken. <laughs> no, no, don't like... you have something with the, uh, the with the woman? <laughs> That's a different one, not Angry Chicken. I know that one. <laughs> yeah, you're thinking of Ladies of Leap. Okay, Ladies of Leap. Uh, right. Angry, angry Chicks. Whatever. <laughs> Good enough. Um, you know, and so there are there are competitive there are um oh, really involved women in, in, in competitive sports and I, to say that um you know there isn't people there aren't people playing it that, that are you know men versus women it just it comes off as kind of ridiculous to me uh it's not to be on a soapbox or whatnot but, yeah, yeah um, I, I, it's true um you'll but you'll there is a 
consistent level of misogynistic behavior among gamers. I mean, there just is. Uh, if you go on Twitch and you see men and women streaming, there's, and you go into the chat rooms, it's just, it's just filth. Um, which is unfortunate because <clears throat> one of the best, like I know there's one, um, what's her name? I think she goes by Hafu. Uh, was only was a Hearthstone player, and you know, it was one of the top ten. Mm-hmm. Uh, great player, yeah, particularly in an esport where unless someone turns a camera on or you can hear their voice, right. you can't tell what gender they are anyway. Uh, the whole idea is just of separating them or any kind of divisions or anything. It's just stupid leftover crap that we should have evolved beyond ages ago. Yeah. And it's really disappointing, particularly for something new where we can set new standards and go at it in a new way right. um, yeah. to have these old biases and, and stupid behaviors behind them. I could see there being real reasons between having a men's and women's football, right? You know, because there are genuine physical differences, um, and women are too smart to play football anyway. Uh, well, I mean, this is the kind of carryover is that there's no. We still have softball as opposed to girls playing baseball. They're kicked out of little league at at a certain age, uh, and they're forced into softball because I softball, they finally got rid of that stupid crap. It, it doesn't really happen. There are no high school. Um, women's baseball leagues. Well, they they can't just play, you know, baseball. No, 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 no. Uh, At high school level, I mean, there are some leagues that there there's something like there's no physical no. contact. Well, there's yeah. not supposed to be any physical contact in baseball. Yeah, there's. I think I think the numbers that I saw were something like a couple thousand, maybe five thousand or ten thousand women in the U.S. period at, at sort of the teenage years that are playing high, uh, playing baseball. Um, you know, and actually one of the best knuckleball pitchers in the world right now is a girl. Um, she early on wanted to learn how to, to play and play with the boys, and so she picked up the knuckleball and became... Uh, she was trained by, I think, Phil Negro, who was a Hall of Fame or borderline Hall of Fame um, knuckleball pitcher, and became really good at it. And so she can, she, she's already gotten offers to play competitively in Europe, or not Europe, um, I think Asia. I think in Japan, I think, is where it was. Um, but she's chosen to say, I'm going to see if I can go to college and, and so forth. Uh, so there's no historical, there's no reason behind that. But again, getting to the esports point, I mean, yeah, there's. It's silly. I'd like to see more integration that way. Just let people play. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, especially yeah. Um, the- and, and, but to finish the story, they did go back on it. Yeah. Well, public shaming will do that from time to time. Yeah. Well, which is good, but um, you wouldn't see that in a lot of things. Uh, if you, you track it, it was one day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It came out, and then they completely backtracked and said, no, 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 we changed our minds. Yeah. So that's that's good. Well, your response to growth trajectory, if you misstep, you're dead. You know? Yeah. You could be you could be the, the one who owns this. I mean, you and I, Robert, had talked about this recently about sort of Major League Gaming, um, how they could have be completely owning the space at this point, and they dropped the ball. Um, yeah, that's true. So you want to be on the, on the trajectory up, or else you're just going to be left behind. Right. Yeah, but um, it was, I think, hopeful that there was such community outrage yeah. that they, they went back on it. So, yeah, so let's move into, let's go to Chris. We came, we saw, we kicked it down. All right, so I just got back from vacation where I went on my favorite type of vacation which is on a cruise you spend a week on a boat out in the middle of the water stop by land every once in a while get nice and drunk and have a good time and that's a cruise for you um, good story all right thanks yeah <laughs> yeah uh, I don't know if I'll I won't I won't uh, I won't say specifics of cruise lines or particular ships or anything. Uh, as to avoid a, a critical review, uh, but I had a good time. Yeah, but what and, does it rhyme with? 
<laughs> what does that rhyme with? Did you see anything that was nice? An island, uh, a lake? Yes. Uh... Yes, I had a good time. I had a good time. Uh, the service on a cruise is always outstanding. Uh, the food on this particular cruise was fine. Uh, wasn't the best I ever had. Wasn't the worst. Everything was well done, well prepared. Uh, I got the all you can drink package, which was awesome. Started drinking at uh, let's say twenty of eleven one morning, the first on the first day of the cruise. And oh, I thought uh, you said you were going to start drinking with a podcast that we recorded and then uh, stop until <laughs> no. <laughs> No, no, no. Uh, my wife and I happened to be the first bar sale at this one particular bar on the ship for the cruise. Nice. <laughs> it's got our, our money's worth out of the uh, the the uh, drinks. Actually, this particular cruise line mixed their drinks nice and strong. And that was good because I've been on some cruises that that was not the case. Um, anyway, I like to cruise because the whole thing is taken care of for you. Your transportation, your lodging, activities. You don't have to think about anything. You know, you can go have a few drinks. You don't have to worry about driving anywhere. If you want to go lay by the pool all day, you can do that. There's no, there's no agenda that you have to follow, right? There's activities going on in the ship, but you don't have to think, which I really like about cruise vacations. You don't have to make plans unless you want to. It's all taken care of for you. And I like that. You know, if you go to the beach, you have to, you know, you have to plan to find parking at the beach or you might have to walk to the beach or you have to... You know, you have to plan your day out. Where are you going to go to dinner? These kinds of things. Nope. For a cruise, it's all decided for you. It's, it's really shut your brain down, kill some brain cells with alcohol, and have a good time. I see. Now, I did spend a week at the beach whilst you were on a cruise. And so okay. <laughs> I had to walk, you know, uh, a couple hundred feet to get onto the beach. Uh, yeah. I had to walk a good three minutes to get to a pool. So it was more from that perspective. Sure. Oh, unbelievably taxing. Yes, yes. You know, you get so worn out from the walk to the beach that you feel the need to lay down in the sun. Well, yeah, but see, when I've gone to the beach, like, then you have to figure out where you're going to go for dinner, and oftentimes it involves driving. Yeah, we made dinner. Okay, you made dinner? See, a lot of times we, we would stay at a hotel room, and so the, you know, the options of making food is, yes, is not there. Yes, an actual beach house, so there was a... Uh, oh, cool, yeah. So forth. Now, did you do any excursions or anything like that? Yeah, we usually do excursions. I've done a lot of bicycling excursions and things like that in the past. This one, we took a tour of one of the ports, which turned out to be not as interesting as I thought it was going to be. Um, we spent a half hour, 40 minutes on asphalt looking at a lock. Yep, that was awesome. There were some manatees, which was fine, but it wasn't you know 45 minutes on hot asphalt fine. Uh, that was, was <laughs> that was bad. Uh, and we had an hour or so at a fish market that was really a, all about shrimp, not fish so much. Um, that was also not as interesting as it could have been. Um, and and then took away from quality drinking time. It did. It did. I was the entire time I was sitting thinking, man, I could be getting drunk on the boat right now. Well, see, that's but, an hour and a half. So what yeah. was a better hour and a half? Uh, 45 minutes on a pavement and 45 minutes looking at shrimp or right. wanted dead or alive. Oh, God. The pavement <laughs> and the shrimp. <laughs> Definitely the pavement and the shrimp. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but then the uh, excursion had two other interesting things, too. There was a, a, a building at the port that was sort of like a museum to the port, which was interesting, but we didn't spend nearly enough time in there because we'd burned all this time at the fish market and at the uh, uh, right. lock. And then there was a nice um, Air Force History Museum uh, about rocket launches there at um, in Florida, and that was pretty cool too. Uh, but again, we didn't spend nearly as much time there because we burned all that time at the fish place and at the uh, at the lock. So the excursion I wasn't too impressed with this time around. But in the past, I've had some pretty good excursions. And what's fun about cruises is you can do cool things like you know take a jeep out in the jungles of Mexico if you want to do that, right? Or you can, again, just sit on the beach and get drunk. You know, whatever you want to do. Most of my choices are getting drunk. But um, it was still a good time. Yeah. All right, then. So anybody that likes to uh, looking for a vacation idea, I strongly recommend cruising. The <laughs> boats are large, so you don't really get that seasick. Although you do see people with the Dramamine patches on their the back behind their ear. Um, I've oh, yeah, never... yeah. That's something I'm actually curious about. Given that you had the all you can drink package, yes, that you've made sure you got your money's worth. Mm -hmm. How did that? There was no interaction with that in the movement of the boat. Uh, not for me. No, he, he, he swayed in time. Yeah, I mean, there was some. There was one night where the ship was rocking a little bit, but it really wasn't that bad. 
Um, <laughs> this is, oh, we had this great wine steward at the dinner, and he basically uh, treated our water like wine, or wine like water, I'm sorry. So you know when you go to a restaurant and you get a glass of water, the waiter or the waitress comes by and fills it for you automatically, right? Well, right. this guy, because we had the all-you-can-drink package, did that for us for the wine, and it was awesome. I think there was one dinner I had a whole bottle of wine to myself, and then some. It was great. Just kept on refilling the wine. Um, but no, the alcohol, um, not on this particular cruise. Now, if you cruise probably sort of in the Atlantic towards the winter times, the seas are a little rougher in general. And so you might have more problems with that. But uh, the time of the year we usually cruise is May and June. And most of the time we stuck to the Caribbean and the um, Atlantic close to the U.S., southeast U.S. And we've never really had any problems. You give another week, you could have hit the uh, hurricane that hit uh, North Carolina. That's very grateful that we did not delay our vacation by a week or two because we had thought about that that week that the hurricane was down there. We thought about actually taking the vacation that week, but uh, we decided against it for some other reason. I think it was the 4th of July. We didn't want to run into 4th of July traffic. Um, now, the interesting thing, too, with the cruise is that it has a reputation of, of being the vacation for the newly married, newly buried. It's sort of what they say, right? Uh I don't think that's necessarily the case anymore. I mean, you see a lot of people on these ships with families or um, couples, younger couples, middle-aged couples without their kids. Uh, so there's a diversity of ages. It's not just the really old. Uh, now, this particular cruise that I was on, there were quite a few really old people. I mean, these were couples celebrating their 70th wedding anniversary. That was one of them. Yeah. That was a shit ton of bingo on this cruise, too. <laughs> um, but <laughs> don't normally see that. You see some bingo, but not as much as we had on this one boat. But... But yeah, it's a good time. So if anybody's looking for a cru- uh, vacation idea, I'd consider cruising. Okay. Uh, Steven, have you done the cruise thing? Nope. My parents suddenly got into cruises in the last year. Uh, so they've been on three cruises in the last, I think, 18 months. Wow. Um, my wife and I have refused any interest in that. Um, she hates the water. Um, you know, she doesn't feel comfortable swimming-wise and so forth. And I don't like being confined in a boat. Okay. So, yeah, uh, my wife and I, before we had our, our child, uh, I've done one cruise, a uh, Caribbean cruise, and uh, I liked it a lot. Yeah. Some of the excursions were kind of meh, like Chris said. Uh, there was this one to the Mayan pyramids, which was 90 minutes of trekking through the jungle, all sweaty and nasty, thinking you're going to die. To go, yep, uh, tall and like lots of rocks. Great. <laughs> in, the, in the 90 minutes I can out. It just wasn't worth it. Um, it was one of those things where you go, yeah, okay, seen the pyramids, great. Um, but, uh, you know, some of the other ones I enjoyed a lot. Uh, I enjoyed the Caymans. Uh, mm-hmm. That was great. Key West was not my thing. I'm not a Key West person. I'm not into, I don't know, strip bars and weird transvestite clubs and some of the other. Regular transvestite clubs you're into, just not weird ones? Correct. Executive okay. transvestites are fine. It's Good the weirdo enough. transvestites that are the problem. Got it. Understand. Um, and this was not the executive transvestite crowd. It, okay, mental note. Go to Key West. <laughs> <laughs> it was like old Times Square, you know, <laughs> when it was like nasty. Yeah. So it just, it wasn't like, it wasn't cool. Uh, and I love counterculture stuff. Uh, you know, like the whole, I like that stuff a lot. But this was not, it was just nasty. So maybe we hit it a bad time of year or there was some weird convention in town or something. <laughs> but uh, did not enjoy that. Uh, the nasty transvestites of America. Correct. <laughs> um, the NTA. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, they did not. Uh, it, was, it was not a good time. But I enjoyed the cruise a lot and I don't drink. So, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be an alcohol thing. Um, oh, no, not at all. Yeah. But the yeah. one thing that, and I remember you told me this, Chris, and I thought you might want to bring it up again. Um, normally on a cruise, or at least the cruise I was on, there was endless food, endless oh, good yeah. food. You could yeah. eat and eat and eat, you know, 24-7. It was, uh, you know, midnight chocolate buffets and <laughs> lobster at 3 a.m. and just uh, obscene amounts of food. Um and I remember you saying that you thought it might have been a peculiarity of the particular boat you were on, but that uh, that was not the case. Yeah, uh, no midnight buffet at all. Um, the 
after hours dining was limited to a small cafe, which was not self-serve at all. You had to wait in line for the food, which kind of kills the atmosphere of um, the late night eating, late night dining on a cruise ship. It was a place to go and hang out, and it kind of just didn't exist on this ship. Uh, the food, everything was prepared very well. I, I didn't have a bad meal, but on most boats, I've basically looked at the menu for dinner and said, oh, wow, what do I choose? In this particular case, it was, oh, wow, what do I choose? Uh, you know, it was like one or I mean, we had windows that you could see outside and, you know, that opened up and stuff. Um, but eh, spend your time on deck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We've had we've gone from porthole rooms to balcony rooms and we've had all kinds of things in between. And you're right. The rooms, honestly, you're just there to sleep, sleep and change clothes. The only ways uh, I could see different is those ones that are on like the back of the boat where they have their huge private balconies. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking those, these giants, that's where the giant suites tend to be. Yeah. Um, I could see that perhaps being different. Yeah. But beyond that, I mean, the room's just a room. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like to go up on the top deck towards uh, any time of the day, honestly, but even towards sunset. And I'm not a big water person, and I don't swim very well at all. But I, I think it's cool to be out there. You can't see any land and just to kind of realize or think to yourself, most of the planet is like this. Right. As opposed to, we're going down. Right. Well, Iceberg, yeah. right ahead. Right, right, right. Yeah. Nah, it's, uh, Poseidon Adventure. Yeah, that's pretty unlikely to happen. <laughs> well, I'd like it to be zero chance of that happening. But well, there's no such thing as zero chance of anything happening. <laughs> well, well, given the last cruise ship uh, mishaps, it's actually within sight of shore that's been the problem. So Yeah, well, you know, yeah. it's been... Funny was this particular ship that we were on apparently had an issue with a um, norovirus or something like that a few months wow. earlier. So there was Purell everywhere. Like you go into the the uh, cafeteria and they were like forcing Purell upon you. Here, have this. Like you try to go in without it, they wouldn't let you in without it. And there was this Purell. I mean, my wife and I joked that you know this cruise brought to you by Purell. <laughs> yeah, it was everywhere. I can't you know, stress that enough. But well, is a. I saw it in the show notes here. The one thing that I don't know if you really covered was your advice for cruising. Oh yeah. So advice. Um, there's a couple different ways you can plan to book a cruise. Uh, we like to book early because there's more flexibility in the rooms. But if you're flexible about when you travel, you can wait until the last minute and get really good deals. Hundreds of dollars off. It's not like an airplane where if you wait to the last minute, you're paying a lot more than everybody else. Cruise is very different because they want to sail with a full ship. And so they, you can get good, if you're flexible, you can get good um, prices. Uh, the other advice is to basically just go and have fun and, uh, you know, plan, pair, well, prepare the clothing that you're going to wear appropriately because there's formal nights there's, there's, and it's fun to do that kind of thing. And uh, so make sure you pack enough clothing, but don't overpack. Um, but more than anything else, just go and have fun, do your homework ahead of time in terms of the, um, uh, excursions, check out cruise critic. It's a website where people can review different cruise ships, different cruise lines. And because cruise critic will tell you things like if you're going on this ship, you should get this, um, excursion as soon as you get on the boat, or this one doesn't fill up very fast, get this one later, you know, so do your homework a little bit ahead of time, but just prepare to have fun. It's, it's just a good time. It's terrible advice, I know, but 
Your advice is have fun. Oh, have fun. Yeah. I was planning on having a terrible time. Thank you. Yeah, horrible advice. Uh, okay, well, let's Take us wrap on. it up. Take it. All right. So remember, boys and girls, whatever you do this week, just keep it awesome. <laughs> The Hour of Awesome is a production of Jester Cat Studios. You can see more about this and all the other Jester Cat shows at www.jestercat.com. You can also email the show at hoa at jestercat.com. Catch the show live Sunday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern at www.jestercat.com slash TV. Follow the show on Twitter at our underscore awesome. You can follow Robert at R.S. Macy. You can follow Stephen at S.E. Humphrey. And you can follow Chris at CW Cult. And thanks again to Scott Fletcher for the voiceovers. Go to voice.caroworks.com for more about Scott's great voiceover work.